We'd always been told, that even though none of us had qualified as fashion designers, that we were fashion designers, and yet we designed our own house, we designed our own shops. Every time we walk down the street, you want to change something. Every time, every time you see somebody's haircut, you believe you could do a better job. When you see somebody decorate their house, you believe you could do a better job. When you get in a car, you believe that you could design that car to be more comfortable. When you get on a bike, you feel, oh God, the saddle's in the wrong position in the handle. <laughs> When, when, you, when, you come, when you come into, when you go into the council offices and you see the carpet, you think, oh God, why do they have a carpet? That makes you feel unhappy. You know, <laughs> and who, who else, who else, who else feels like that? Who else has got a brain that's like that? So most people in here are, put, are putting their hand up. You feel like you can... change the world, mate. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's why, you know, creative people should, should, have got to start taking control a little bit more. The Romans said that they would leave this world a better place than they would find it. And the best people, the best people to do that are us, people in this room. You know, I, I, I do genuinely believe that. I think, we're in a, I think we're more likely to do that than most politicians that I meet. And I always follow the world's livability indices every year. And the thing that really disappoints me is in, in the UK, we only get one city in the top 100 world's livable cities. Uh, and that's London, it comes in about 35. Denmark, sorry, yeah, Denmark's got five in it at the moment, and Norway's got four, Canada's got three or four, Australia's got two or three, um, Switzerland's got two, and we've got one, London, down at 35. And there are so many reasons why this country uh, it is becoming less livable as a place. We always, oh, we, have this, we have this thing called a show and tell every alternate week at uh, Hemingway Design. This is something that really, really pissed me off about a year and a half ago. I went to, went to Minehead and, and there was this sign and can you read? Well, it, well, uh, no camping. Well this was in a quiet bit of Minehead. A lovely gr green sward which went down to the beach. Uh, we'd just come back from Scandinavia on holiday where you can free camp absolutely anywhere as long as you don't, as long as you leave it how you found it, which is what human beings should do. And then it says no dogs. I can understand that because it's a children's play area and you don't want, you know, I know you can get that disease, so fair enough. No ball games. A children's play area with no ball games. You know, what the kids, I brought up kids, I've been a kid myself, what do we look? We love playing with a ball. It's something, that thing about a ball bouncing, it, it rolls, it's fantastic. It's, it's better than so many other things. It's one of the best inventions ever. <laughs> Say no to strangers. In Scandinavia, in, in, I, think, I think the figure is 68% of Swedes implicitly trust a stranger. In the UK, only 23% of us say that we would ever trust a stranger. Where do you want to live? What kind of society? Well, I want to live here because I, I like Blackburn Rovers too much. But I want to live in a society where people trust each other. Because a society where there isn't trust is shit, basically. We build housing like this. I'm chair of this thing called Building for Life, which you can look on the website. And we build housing like this. And this housing is classed as sustainable. It ticks boxes. It doesn't leak energy. Do any of you um, think of a reason why it's not sustainable? It's not welcoming. It's ugly. What does that mean, then? Nobody wants to live there. Will, will anybody look after it? This housing is built for, there's a big group of 20 to 20 odd year olds here. Um, so quite a lot of you are from Asia, so it's kind of, you, you're probably going back to better housing than we're building here. So, um, But for, for you English people, who are, or anybody who's going to remain in this country, this is, what, this is what we are building, my generation is building for you. Do you want to live in it? No. And then we want, you know, what are these? <laughs> Australians, chavs. The word chavs was used. I will, I, I won't use that in this at the moment. I'll say that these are young men who a lot uh, create part of the future of this country. Most people in this room um, have had a luckier upbringing than these than these lads. But these kids have been brought up in a prison of sorts. They've, all they've known is PlayStation. They've got nowhere to play. We give them five bloody springy chickens to play. And we think that that's a play area. Uh, right, I'll tell you the story of a, a, a council play officer. And we showed him that what we wanted to do, and it's very much like this, and we, we have this concept of free-range kids, that kids, you know, don't like to play on springy chickens, that they like to do things that are a little bit more adventurous. They don't have to be about dangerous, but are more adventurous. And kids like to walk along 
bits of wood and it might want to wobble and then they fall off and whatever. And, and um, litigation, we can't do that. Somebody will sue us. You put a sign up saying, do this at your own risk. In the same way that in a car park, valuables left at your own. You, you can, and, and they say, well, oh yeah, but vandals will break it down. You put another fucking one up there. <laughs> You know, you don't go, you don't play to the, to, the, to the lowest denominator all the time. Otherwise, it does end up, it, it, equations like that, five springy chickens equals ten chaps to the power of two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it really, it, these are more things that we have on our wall at work, you know, in the most influential magazine in the world. Uh, British youth, unhappy, unloved and out of control, an epidemic of violence and drunkenness has made Britain scared of its young. What's causing this crisis? Well, hopefully you can see we're causing it by all the, the stupid things, the, the, house, the crap housing that we build, the stupid regulations. We're bottom of the UNICEF study of child well-being. No wonder we, we don't get any cities in the livable. And it, be, we're absolutely bottom of the, of the developed world. Teen pregnancy, teen alcoholism. We've got 18% of the, of the prison population in the UK are under 18. The next highest in the world is 9% in Germany. We're crap. And, 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 we, and we've, got, we've got to have some kind of revolution that's going to change all of this. You know, Cameron's not going to change it. Not, you know, the next government aren't going to change any of this. We all have to become more political in some way. Um, yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to give you an idea of how it can happen. How we can have a, a, a creative cultural revolution. It starts here tonight, in a few minutes. Um, we put our thinking into practice in big housing development. We took an area, the bottom 3% of deprivation in the UK, called Dunstan in Gateshead. This was a site, it had been empty for 12 years. The council said that there couldn't be any housing there because it was in a, a donut of deprivation. It was surrounded by deprivation and nobody would want, the value of the land was absolutely zero. And we said, by good design, we can change that area. And we can, we can attract urban pioneers who are going to go and live there because you're creating something great and building, because of the low land value, you're building, you can put more into the housing and build greater, greater landscape and greater housing. This was the first street that we built. It was 800 metres from that stuff that I said would get pulled down. Um, it was built at the same price. Um, we built small gardens with a communal area which people manage themselves. This was taken in 2003, this picture. Six years later, there is no vandalism. There is one bit of graffiti. It's 800 homes, one bit of graffiti in a really rough part of Gateshead. There's been no damage to this table, tennis table. It gets used all of the time and all of the other stuff gets used there all the time. The value of design is massive now. We are the second largest driver of the British economy uh, and people are listening to us. The, the government know our value and it's time to stand up and, and, let, the, and let local councils know, know your value. One way of doing that is getting yourself into, I'm, I'm chair of this thing called the South Coast Design Forum. That These things are popping up all around the country. Get yourselves together and then make yourself known to the council and start to become a moaning force. But a moaning force that has a solution. Not, not, not a moaning force of, of uh, of people who write to the paper and just moan about everything. But a moaning force who, because of your creative mind, said, no, there's another way of doing this. Uh, and just, otherwise, you know, you can listen, I'm sort of like your dad, otherwise just, just sit back and, and let things get worse, because they are, and let the gap get bigger. <laughs>